Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to our Sunday Koinonia service. You know how we do it. Go ahead and share the video. Tell somebody we are on, we are live this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Are you ready to praise God this morning? Please share the video. Tag someone. Amen. Do what you need to do. Somebody needs to hear the gospel. They are saved because we tell them about Jesus. Amen. So as we praise God, we're saying hallelujah, meaning we're halaling Yahweh. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus? Hallelujah. He's a mighty, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready for Jesus this morning? Come on, somebody. Come on, move side to side. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, get up on your feet. Somebody move your body. Aha! Aria, aria, aria! Jesus! Sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Open it tomorrow. Sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Open it tomorrow.
Come on, somebody, that's what I said, I say. That's what I said. Come on, somebody need to move. Jesus is the reason. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Said, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Aha. Jesus is the reason. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody needs to shout to Jesus wherever you are. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I get go. Oh, banana. All the time. Jesus, we give you praise, Jehovah, we give you honor. We shout hallelujah to your name this morning. Come on, go ahead and just, you know, stay where you are. Invite somebody, share the video, and stay tuned to the service. Amen, amen. We give God the praise. We give God the glory. What a beautiful day to be alive. Come on, somebody, wherever you are, just give God the praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. I'm excited to be here this morning. I'm trying to check out who are the people in church. If you're in church this morning, just go ahead and shout aloud hallelujah wherever you are. I just want to hear you hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Give him all the glory. Tell him how great he is. There is no God like him. Come on, somebody. We give you all the glory, my father, my king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I see Sister Gia Victor. I see Sister Lydia. Samantha, I see you in the presence of the Lord. Sister Clara, I see you. Glory looks good on you. Who else is there? I see you. I see you, Mr. Morgan. I see you, Sister Catherine. Deacon Dave, I see you. Sister Janet, glory looks good on you. Is that DJ? I see there. Wow, Precious is in church this morning. Glory to God. It's going to be a blessed service in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor G. Thank you so much, Brother AK, for that time of praise. Glory looks good on you. I want to be sure everybody's hearing me. Can you all hear me? If you all can hear me very well, just let me know you can hear me loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay, I think I can hear myself. All right, I can hear myself. So welcome to church. It's going to be a blessed time in the presence of the Lord. I just want us to just raise up a cry of prayer just to thank the Lord. This is the last Sunday. 
in the month of August. God took you all the way from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, uh, September. Okay, September is just coming just now. The same God who kept you all this month, He will keep you in the rest of the month to come. No evil shall come upon you. No plague shall come upon you in the name of Jesus. This is a good place to celebrate Jesus. Can we just take a moment to thank the Lord? If you're watching right now, it's a sign that you have sight to see. If you're watching right now, you can hear what I'm saying. You have every reason to be grateful that today you and I can be counted amongst the living. Not because we deserve it, but because God has been faithful. Can somebody just go to the comment and say, Lord, we thank you. Come on, somebody. Mm. We are the grateful people. We are the grateful people. Yes, Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful for your goodness. We are grateful for your mercy. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. He is a good God. He is a mighty God. He is the great I am. He functions beyond the realm of men. I don't know about you. I just want to take a moment. I want to take a moment to give this God praise. Because too many times you can get deluded thinking is the mask that you have on. You might get deluded thinking is the social distancing. You might get deluded thinking it might even be the vaccine you took. But brothers and sisters, it has nothing to do with that. People took vaccines and they, they still died. People had masks on, they still went away. It is just the grace of God. This is the Goshen experience, the Goshen season. You and I, we need to take a moment to give God some break dance. We need to take a moment to give God all the praise. We, we need to take a moment to tell him how great he is. He is the mighty God. Nobody else compared to you. Come on. We worship you, Kabyesi. Come on, somebody, lift up your cry, your praise. It can only be God. It can only be God. Mm. It can only be God, the faithful Father, the I am that I am, the rock of ages, the one who makes a way where there is no way. He, he is the God, the first and the last. We are grateful. Is there any grateful person? Pastor Wale, thank you so much for that word. Yes, we are grateful in the name of Jesus. Yes, Ma'am Catherine, he's an all-sufficiency. He's the great God, Brother Gabriel. Yes, you can give him a dance. Yes, we thank you, Father God, for keeping us. It is just your mercy. It is just your grace. Ribaro shatala bradasa, rifra pandele gearosa. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You and I, I want us to take a moment right now. I want us to take a moment to break over the next coming month. So, right now, we are stepping into what we call the embers. The embers. September, October, November, December. So, after August is the Umba month, the embers. And you know what happens? These are the months where demonic forces, don't play with this. Don't tell me it's superstition. No. These are the months where uh, spiritual forces, especially the evil ones, they, they, they intensify their effort. You go do your research in any nation of the world. You will find out from September through to December, you have more people in accidents, more people die, more people in crazy stuff those months because the enemy tries to round off the year he's always trying to imitate God can I say that slowly he's always trying to imitate God the Bible says from our father the Bible says he crowns our year he crowns our year meaning towards the tail, the, the tail end of the year he crowns it what does it mean to crown he gives us his best a crown speaks about the best. So the Bible says he crowns our year. So towards the end of the year, God gives us his best. The same thing with the dark world. They, they copy what God does. They give their best also. And what do they do? They steal. They kill. They destroy. So towards the end of the month, they give their best. But we refuse the best of the enemy. We refuse anything from the enemy. 
It will not come near us. It will not come near our families. It will not come near anything that concerns us. That is why you and I will pray right now. In the name of Jesus, making declarations. We will make declarations, Father God, as we're about to step into this last month of the year, as we're about to step into this month that end the year, we decree and we declare in the name of Jesus. The Bible says first you have to destroy. We decree and declare no plan of the enemy against my life, against my loved ones, against my concerns. No plan of the enemy will prosper. Are you ready to pray with me? Say after me, say, oh Lord. In this season that is about to show up, I commit myself to you and I make a decree that no plan of the enemy over my life, over my concerns, over my businesses, nothing of the enemy shall come to pass in my life. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and make it a declaration, somebody. My devotion. Mm. Rige de bosha tala baya bosha ta. Rika de bosha tala bande de bosha. Rika da ba. Come on, somebody pray. Somebody pray. Push yourself in the place of prayer. Rika de bosha tala baya deshka. Manda da bosha tala baya deshka. Rika da baya dosa tala baya dashe. Come on, somebody push your prayer power. Push your prayer power. Push your prayer power. We refuse the lies of the enemy. We refuse the lies of the enemy. Rigade, come on, somebody. I want to hear your voices in the spirit. I want to hear your voices in the spirit. Is there somebody praying with me? Is there somebody praying with me? Also, Prada, also, Prada. Push your prayer power. Push your prayer power. Push your prayer power. Come on. I can see you right there. Come on. Push your prayer power. Get out of that blanket. Push your prayer power. Push your prayer power. Come on. 10 more seconds. We refuse the lies of the enemy. We refuse the lies of the enemy. They will not prosper in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray. Amen. Right now we will decree according to Psalm 91. The Bible says in Psalm 91 from verse number 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Not the word. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Right now you will pray with me. Say, O Lord. O Lord. O Lord. O Lord. I consciously, I consciously place, myself place myself under your covering. Under your covering. In your secret place. In your secret place. Cover me, Cover me by your ability, by your, ability, by your, love, by your love, and with your mercy. And with your Go mercy. ahead and make it a prayer, somebody. Father, I consciously, Lord, I consciously come submit Lord, myself submit under your covering, under your, Lord, place. under your secret place. Cover me with your mercy. Cover me with your grace. Cover me with your mercy, Lord. Cover me Cover with, me with, with your, your mercy, blood. Lord. Riga rosha ta. Riga zude de de bande de de akosa de 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 akosa I know you can pray better than you are praying right now. I know you can pray better than this. Push yourself in the spirit. Come on, somebody. Come on, push it, push it, push it. Push it, push it, push it. Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Father God. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I want you to make a declaration. Yes, Lord. You know what concerns you. Mm. You know what concerns you, your family members. If you can call them by name, it will be great. I want you to call them by name in this time of prayer. Father God, I speak over my family. I speak your protection. Amen. I speak your peace. Amen. Remember, yesterday we were saying that he has given his angels charge over us. Amen. I want you to speak the ministry of angels over your life, over your children, over your concerns, over your siblings, over your parents. I don't know who you need to bring into this time of prayer. The Bible says he has given his angels charge over us. Now go ahead and make that prayer. It's a decree. A decree. This is how you will pray this. Stay with me. You 
you will make this. I decree in the name of Jesus. My family is protected in this Amen. season. I decree in the name of Jesus. My health is protected. Amen. I decree in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you want to add to that list, but you will say it with boldness. Yes. I decree in the name of Jesus that this will happen. The Bible says, "Who we shall make a decree. We shall make a decree and it shall stand. So right now, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Nkosi Yamakosi, Jesus Christ, I want you to make that decree. Amen. Say, in the name of Jesus, name and of make Jesus, a decree make a concerning decree. my life. Concerning in, my this life. Season, in this season, I am shielded, I am shielded and protected, I am protected from, from evil. From now evil. go ahead and make it a prayer. Oh, Come on, somebody. Go ahead and make it a prayer. Speak the way you want the Lord to the plan of the enemy shall not prosper not in my home not in my life not with my children I make a decree protection I make a decree provision I make a decree in the name Lord, of Jesus. Come on, somebody. I make a decree. Yes, good health. Father, I thank you, Lord. I make a decree that my family is protected. My children are protected. They are covered. I make a decree that my husband shall succeed in the name of Jesus. I make a declaration, of God, that King's Church is protected. I make a decree Yes, Lord, we make a decree in the name of Jesus. We will not, we will not be counted amongst the frustrated. We will not be counted among the diseased in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, child of God. You know, it's amazing. Let me say this to you. The other day, I heard some preachers say, Oh no, we shouldn't make decrees like this. And I'm asking a question in my heart. So what decrees do you want us to make? Do you want me to make a decree that I would die from poverty? Do you want me to make a decree that I would die from sickness? Well, he was saying, no, we will all go through that. Yes, you might go through that. But it doesn't mean I should call it upon myself. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, yes, uh -huh. there might be times you will go through sickness. It doesn't mean I should make a decree that I should fall sick. Uh -huh. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That yes, that I will go through pain doesn't, make I should, doesn't mean I should make a decree and invite pain. No, no, a thousand times no. I reject such demonic teachings. Amen. Those are demonic teachings. No, even though I might fall sick, I shouldn't decree sickness amen, upon my life. Amen, I amen. should decree life, good health. Amen. I should decree amen. life. Amen. The Bible says in mm. the tongue mm. lies the power uh -huh. of life mm. and death. You choose what you want. Amen. It says, I have placed before you mm. life and death. and death. You make a choice. Mm. I refuse to, to decree death mm. because I might fall sick tomorrow. Uh -uh. I refuse to decree poverty because I might be broke tomorrow. Mm. God forbid it. Mm. I decree life. Amen. I decree good Amen. health. I decree prosperity. prosperity. If you get Long upset life. with this, it's your problem. Uh -huh. You can get upset and do what you want to do. Oh. But for myself uh -huh. and my family, Amen. we decree life. Amen. We shall live Amen. and not die. Amen. We will move forward. We will move we will make progress. We are moving forward. Amen. We are shining. Yes. We are shining. Yes. We are yes. going yes. up whatever. Amen. Down what never. Uh -huh. Open your mouth. Uh -huh. If you believe my words, so yes. go ahead and make that house. decree, somebody. We will stand Come on. Lord. Decree yes. in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Mighty God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 So shall it be. So shall it be. Amen. I decree over everyone watching right now that as we end this month of August, this is the last Sunday, 
going into the next ember months the september the october the november and the december i make a decree as a priest of the living yes, god Lord. i speak over your life mm. a thousand may fall on your side mm. Ten thousand on the other side, mm. it will never come near you. Amen. I said it will never come near Amen. you. You are exempted from evil. Amen. This is the Goshen experience. Yes, you are exempted from death. Amen. The Bible says, Yes, mm. the Bible says, The plague shall not smite you by day uh -huh. or by night. Amen. It said, No plague shall come near your dwelling place. Mm. But the prophecy of the word of God. Mm. I make a decree yes, over your Lord, life. Yes, no plague shall come your dwelling place. Mm. Ay, 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 ay. Who needs this word? Who needs this yes, word? Master, yeah, you yeah. will not cry over your children. Amen. You will not cry over your siblings. Amen. You will not cry over your health. Amen. In this month, mm. you will stand strong. Amen. I say you will stand strong. Amen. I decree yes, with Lord. you mm. in this season, mm. you will shine. Amen. I say you will shine. Amen. You will shine. Amen. By the prophecy of scripture, uh -huh. the Bible says yes, he will crown our year with mm. goodness. Amen. Ay, 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 Amen. Ay, ay. You did not hear mm. that. He says he will crown our year with goodness. Mm. By this prophecy, of scripture Amen. I make a decree yes. your year will be crowned with goodness Amen. your year will be crowned with goodness Amen. corona or no corona uh -huh, vaccination uh -huh. or no vaccination yes. whatever they call it mm. you will end this year with goodness Amen. I say you will end this year with goodness Amen. is there anybody out there mm. taking this prophetic yes. word I say you will end this year with goodness Amen. as we step into the ember month mm. I speak speed for you Amen. I speak on common favor Amen. for you I speak strength for you mm. I put a shield mm. of fire around you Amen. I put a shield Amen. I put a shield of fire a shield of fire Amen. around your children Amen. a shield of fire around your home a shield of fire Amen. around your family mm. all that concerns you yes, Kayaba, listen child of God these are not just ordinary prayers mm. can I give you the testimony of Lucifer mm. oh my god you know sometimes sometimes we learn sometimes we learn from the testimony of Lucifer mm. because most times can I say this without trying to be funny sometimes we try to hear from God and we don't hear God mm. meanwhile God has used the devil to speak mm. It's amazing. Huh? God can use anything. anything. God can use anybody. Mm. Listen to what Lucifer said. In the book of Job, when Lucifer entered into the presence of God and God starts to brag about a boy called Job. I call him boy because in the eyes of God, we're all boys and girls. So he said, have you seen my boy Job? Have you seen how well he's doing? Listen to the testimony of God. God did not say Job must be sick. Uh -uh. God was telling the devil, have you seen anybody like him? He's the richest man in the east. He, his children are, are good people. God was boasting and bragging about the good things of Job. Don't tell me not to decree good things because of your, your twisted theology. Don't tell me that. I decree goodness because God also decreed goodness. Listen to what Lucifer said. Ribarosha, Hallelujah! Can you hear me now? I think I should be back up. Your mic is off. Come on, come on! Are you hearing me right now? You hearing me right now? Glory to God! Apologies for that. Where did I lose you? Where did you lose me? All right, I need to go back there. Let me rewind again. Let me rewind again. I was saying that sometimes, listen to me. Sometimes God can use the enemy to speak to you. Amen. I don't know if that was where I, I lost you or you lost me, but I need to say this. Everybody needs to hear this. So sometimes God can use the enemy to speak to you. Mm. And the Bible says in the presence of God, mm. God starts to boast about Job. Mm. 
God says, Lucifer, have you seen my servant Job? Have you seen my boy Job? He said, Job is prospering. Job is moving forward. Amen. He's the wisest man. Uh -huh. He's the rich. God was boasting about Job. Mm. Listen, child of God, it is the will of God for you to prosper. Amen. I, I don't know who else is saying what. I don't know what they are preaching uh -huh. out there. Uh -huh. I don't know the theology that is twisted they have. Mm. It is the will of God for the church to prosper. Amen. I'm going to repeat this. Mm. That you might be sick tomorrow doesn't mean you don't declare the will of God uh -huh, for today. Uh -huh, uh -huh, no, uh -huh. don't let the devil steal from you. So God was boasting about Job. He said, have you seen Job? Now listen, the devil now said to God, he says, were you not the one or are you not the one who put a wall around him? Hence I said to you, even the devil can give you revelation. Uh -huh. The devil was given a revelation of saints that God, Put a wall of fire around us. My God, can't you see how protected you are Amen. right now? That wall that has been placed around you, you will push a trigger. Lord, I activate my wall. Amen. I activate that wall. Do you know sometimes you and I, there is a tendency for us to break that wall. There is a tendency for us to make the wall come down. The Bible says whoever breaks the hedge. So you will pray, Lord, however I have broken my wall by my unbelief. By my spoken words, by my fears, by my negative decrees, maybe by seed, whatever the case, however I have broken my wall, firstly forgive me and in the name of Jesus, a combined prayer, I rebuild my wall. Amen. Go ahead and make it a prayer somebody. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuild my wall in the name of Jesus. I rebuke my wall in the name of Jesus. I rebuke my walls. I rebuke my walls in the name of Jesus. I rebuke my walls. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. I rebuke my walls. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. So as we round off this month of August, I want to bless all the women in the house. Amen. Be you an auntie. Be you a wife. Be you a sister. Maybe you are a girlfriend. I don't know where you fall into. But if you are a woman, I want to bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to speak a covering. You know, the women, they have blessed us this month. Amen. Every Sunday we have been blessed by the women this month. And we are encouraged. Maybe we're going to have men's month. We'll make it official, even if the government doesn't say so. The month of men. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I want to bless every woman in the house. I decree by the authority vested upon me, by the blood of Yeshua, Hamashiach, and Kosi, and Makosi, my God. I decree over you, woman, your seed shall grow. Amen. The Bible says, and the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent. I leave it there for you. But the prophecy of scripture, your seed shall crush the head of the serpent. Amen. Your seed doesn't have to be a physical child. Mm. Your seed can be an idea. Mm. Your seed can be a job. Yes, your Lord. seed can be a business. Mm. What is a serpent? The serpent is anything that comes against you. It can be sickness. It can be uh, uh, depression. It can be suicidal thoughts. But I pray for you right now. Yes, Let your seed overcome every serpent in your world. Amen. I said, let your seed crush the head. Amen. Crush the head Amen. of every serpent in your universe, yes, in your life. Amen. You will make progress. Yes, Lord. In this season, I pray for you, woman of God. I pray for you, daughter of Jehovah. You will shine. Amen. I pray for favor. Whatever you believe in God for, yes, I agree with you. Amen. I bring my faith. I speak as one that has been called by heaven. Yes, and I speak a prophetic word Amen. as a priest. Amen. That you are blessed in this season. Amen. As we run off the month of August. The month of women. Mm. I pray for you. Amen. You will not have any reason. Mm. To cry tears of sorrow this Amen. year. If you need to cry. Mm. There shall be tears of joy. Amen. You will say God how did you do this. I didn't deserve it. You have opened up doors for me. That will be your prayer this month. That will be your confession and your testimony this month. If ever there is need for tears, there shall be tears of joy. Amen. Woman, arise. Amen. Woman, shine. Amen. It is your time. Hallelujah. No more limitation. Amen.
no more backwardness. Amen. Forward ever. Amen. Forward ever. Amen. Upward ever. Amen. Rising. Amen. Shining. Amen. Rising. Amen. Rising. Amen. Shining. Amen. I say you are rising. Amen. You are shining. Amen. You are rising. Amen. You are shining. Amen. Whether the devil likes it or not, yes. that will be your portion. In the name of and Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Somebody go ahead and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him praise, give him praise. I know you can do better than that. He's a worthy God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So this month, as the women stand handing over the microphones back, I want to take time to thank every woman that has been fundamental in the services this month. Thank you for a great time of praise and worship. Pastor Gomasang, we honor you. We love you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Lola. For taking time to take the word of God, take us to the word of God. Amen. Queen Esther, all the way from Zambia, mm. thank you so much. Amen. You blessed us with the word. Dr. Zin Z. Dilan, all the way from Rice Church, New York, thank you so much for being a blessing to us. Amen. We honor you so much. And one more time, I want to thank Pastor Fifi. Rifilowe Ukebu. I want to thank you for taking my name. Oh, for, I want to thank you for, for being a blessing to us in the month of August. And you will still be a blessing to us today. And by the way, church, today is her birthday. Today is her birthday. And I honor this woman so much. She has been fundamental in my spiritual growth. She has been fundamental in what God has been doing. I want every one of us to love on her today. It's her birthday. If you need to send a message, send a message. Go to her Facebook page. Post her pictures. Put her DP. If you love her, put her face on your DP. Do something. Don't just stop by saying happy birthdays. I want to get alerts on her phone. This is a voucher. A voucher for swimming. A voucher for, for, for skydiving. I don't know what you want to do. Send something in. Love those women. I want you to appreciate her so much. She has been a blessing to me. I know there are times she, uh, but she has been a blessing. So, child of God, I want you to help me to celebrate this woman today. Everywhere celebrate her. Let somebody know there is somebody who was born today. Her name is Rifilue. Okay, and we honor her so much. So, it's her birthday today. So, every one of us, please honor her. After the service, I don't know what you need to do, but honor this woman of God. The Bible speaks about the place of honor. When you honor one God has called, you will see God honor you back. So, right now, I, I can't wait for the word she has for us. She has a prophetic word for us today. But before then, the praise worship, they have worship session for us. So, we will worship, we will worship, we will worship. Then we will go straight to the word. It's going to be lit, as the young people say. It's going to be lit. It's going to be dripping. It's going to be off the hook. It's going to be great today in the presence of the Lord. I just want to fold my legs and listen and get blessed in the presence of the Lord. So I don't know if you're ready for the word. So get ready for the word. Get somebody into the service. If you're yet to get somebody into the service, I don't know what you're waiting for. Get somebody into the service. So meanwhile, we're going to cross over to worship session. Let us worship the Lord. Then after the worship, we will go straight to the word. But meanwhile, get somebody in. Invite somebody. Tag a group. Let somebody know church is going on. So we're going to see you in a moment. God bless you.
ahead and worship him. I want you to just get connected this morning. Don't forget to share the video. Tell somebody about Jesus this morning. Share the word. Share the video. It's going to be a glorious service. Let's go ahead and just worship the King of Kings. Hallelujah. God is looking after our hearts right now. So we're saying, Lord, we want to give it back to you this morning. The Bible says in Revelations 3.15 that I'd rather that you are hot or cold, but you can't be not cold or hot. Amen. So this morning, we just want to say, Lord, we want to worship you. I want to be hot for you, oh God. Let my heart be on fire for you, oh God. Raman Come on, come on, just worship him, just worship him. Wherever you are, just go ahead and just give him honor, give him praise. Oh, oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you, for you. I know your heart. Mm -hmm. I wanna know your way. I wanna know your heart. I wanna know your way. Come and just worship with us this morning.
This morning the Lord wants to set our hearts on fire. It's time to ignite our fires again. It's still in the land of Goshen. We've been exempted, but the Lord wants to ignite our hearts again this morning. Hallelujah. Set a fire. Set a fire. Start a fire in my heart, oh God. We have grown cold, Jehovah. I want to be on hot for you right now. I want to know. Thank you, Lord. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my heart that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't control, that I can't control. I want more of you. I want more. Set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you. I want more. Set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul. I want more of you. I want more. I want more of you. I want more. 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 I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Father, we worship you this morning, God. Oh, let the fire burn, let the fire burn this morning. Oh, we need to go back to the things of God, the first love, hallelujah. Lord, we rededicate our lives this morning. Let the fire burn in our hearts again, oh God. Oh, I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more. I want more of you, God. I want more. Set a fire, set a fire down in my soul that I can contain, that I can control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. We want more of you, God. We want more of you, God. We want more. Oh, Jesus, we need more of you right now. Lord, let us be on fire again for you. Things of God, the things that matter to you, oh God, not the things that don't matter. Thank you, Jehovah, that we're on fire. We need more of you. We need more. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Stay tuned, amen, hallelujah.
much, Pastor Homozang and Minister AK. Thank you so much, Pastor Obi, for driving this car from the first Sunday in August. It has been awesome. It has been good. And thank you, everyone. You have been tuning in. You were with us from the first Sunday in August, and we are here today on the last Sunday of August. And I just want to say a big shout out to you for always tuning in, always listening, and always being part, an active part of the service this morning. I just want to say thank you as we come to the last Sunday in this month of August. I just want to thank God that you are here. I just want to thank God that you are part of it. And one thing I just want to ask is, of all the people that we heard that were speaking to us, uh, my prayer is that everything they taught us, it should not be in vain. Every single word which we got in the presence of God, cannot, can that word not judge us? Can the same word not work against us? I believe we received tools. I, I believe we received some pointers, some corrections, some encouragement, some anything that you want to call it to help us in this journey of life as women. So this morning, I just want to beg you that do not take such for granted. I don't know about anybody else, but I would like to believe it's almost the same thing as ministers. Let me tell you, I can speak to you every day, but if I have to stand in this pulpit, the whole week is a week full of prayer, full of preparation, full of, Lord, what are you saying? We don't just rock up and feel like we just pass what we feel. It is the wait for the time and the season. We don't work like that. We literally wait on God like, Lord, I am going to meet your people. I don't want to speak my word. I don't want to speak my, my experiences. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do not want to speak what I know. I want to speak what you are saying, Lord. So I believe that you heard something. May those words fall into a fertile ground. May those words fall into the ground that is ready to yield the fruit because the ministered, pray, ministers, they prayed for you. They believed God for you. They believed God for your healing. They believed God for your deliverance. They believed God for your next level. Can you believe God for you now? We have given the tools now. It is your time to say, Lord, I have heard your word. I have gathered. I am ready to start again. I am ready to ride again. So this morning, once again, thank you so much for all the well wishes. Thank you so much. I thank God for this day, and I thank God for my parents. I thank God for so many people in my life. Thank God for Pastor Obi, even when he said on some days, I'm <clears throat> but he's still grateful. I thank God for everything, and I thank God for you, KCC at large. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your presence. Thank you so much. So without wasting time this morning, I'm going to just jump straight into it. This morning, I just want to close this Sunday with the message I have titled, God will give you another. God will give you Ferai. God will give you Aus Dipuo. God will give you Auntie Lydia, Aus Glory, Mama Janet, Mama Catherine, Sis Veni. God will give you another. So that's what I want to share this morning. That all hope is not gone. Nikki, everything is not lost. God will give you another. So this morning, I just came with a word of encouragement. I'm going to be short. It's my birthday, so I don't want to waste time. I want to go and eat. I hope they prepared something for me in this house. So I'm going to be like very short so I can go have a party. But I want to encourage you this morning that God will give you another. So I'm going to just go straight into it. My case study this morning is from the book of Genesis 29. The story is between verse 16 to 30. It's a long read. I am not going to read it. I am going to give you the background of the story. If you've been to church long enough, I know somehow you had the story. So it's the book of Genesis 29 verse 16 to 30. The background of the story, it is Jacob. Remember Jacob stole, ran away from uh, the father's house to the uncle's house. He tarried with the uncle, Uncle Laban. He was there and then he worked for the uncle and he was supposed to marry Rachel. Somehow he was made to marry Leah first and then he had to work again for another time and then eventually he was now married 
to Rachel. So now Jacob's got two wives, Leah and Rachel. That's the background of the story. And in the process of their marriage, Rachel was barren for, the, for a long time and Leah kept uh, giving birth and he gave birth to the first, the second and the third. And that's my, my case study. So that's what we are going to look at this morning. That's my background. The whole story is in the book of Genesis 29, 16. So if you want to go and read later, of which I hope you will go and read and make reference, Genesis 29, 16 to 13. You can read the whole of uh, Genesis 29 just to understand the story. But I just want to use um, this story as our case study this morning. As Jacob now is married to his uh, two wives, Rachel and Leah, and they are in the situation where Rachel is barren and Leah is giving birth. But oh, before I go even into Rachel, I just want to focus on Leah first. Remember, Jacob worked for Rachel and somehow he ended up with Leah. Meaning in this whole story, Leah was just an innocent character in the story that happened between Laban and the father. She was not the one that was supposed to get married. Somehow she found herself in this story. And uh, for me to bring it uh, to us, you know, sometimes we find ourselves in such situations that I was there minding my own business and somebody decided to say, hey, let's partner together and do this business. Or somebody says, hey, I love you and I want to marry you. You are there minding your business. You're not even part of whatever that is happening. And somebody decides to stop by and interrupt your life, interrupt your day. And now Leah find herself in that situation that I was in my father's house. I did not disturb anyone that I want to get married. And yet here I am now be thrown to this person who somehow doesn't even like me not because i wanted to but here i am i'm just this innocent person in this character and in the process leah faced rejection and in the process she was married but lonely and now because she's in this predicament now she you know when you're in that situation where you now need approval of everything you want to do if you want to take a bath, you need somebody to approve. If you want to eat, you need approval. If you lost two, just two kg, you now need approval. Because remember now, everything you are doing is about impressing. In the process of you being rejected, you lost yourself. In the process of you being rejected, your self-esteem is gone. So everything that you are doing now, it's all about impressing the other person. Because now you find yourself in this situation, now you're thinking, I, I, I didn't want to be part of this thing, but I am here now. And because I am here, I want to make it work. And most women, that's what we do. We find ourselves in situation and predicament. And we're like, it's not like I wanted to be here. You came to me. You told me this. You told me you wanted to partner with me. You told me you wanted to hire me. You called me. Now I am here. So I'm like now the one who's trying to make things work. That's where Leah was. Like now I'm trying to make the marriage work. Uh, like I married myself. Now I'm the one trying. And in the process, um, she self-esteem is gone. Like I was saying, now she's married, but lonely. You are in the business is not working or you are in the marriage is not working or things are not um, the way they are. You were envisioning them to be because now here you are. And then the last point, Leah decide, decided to refocus everything on God. And then and when you read... Um, Genesis uh, 29, just the first part, the Bible says, when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren, and Leah conceived, gave birth to a son. Leah conceived, gave birth to a son, and she named him Reuben, for she said, the Lord has seen my affliction, surely my husband will love me now. The Lord has seen my affliction. Surely the Lord will love me now. So now there she goes and now she, she, she names the child Reuben. Now, let me tell you, remember, she's in this marriage. Things are not working as she was hoping for them to, to, to work. Now the Lord blesses her with the child. Instead of her focusing her attention to God who gave her a child. She now names the child Reuben. The name Reuben means see, meaning her intentions were still not pure. Her intentions, because of what she's been through, because of what she has been exposed to, her intentions are now not clear, meaning 
Now I have this blessing. Instead of taking this blessing and dedicating it to God, no, I'm taking this blessing and I'm dedicating it to my husband because now she's saying, now surely my husband will love me. This is what we go through. We always feel if I do a little bit more, maybe they will approve of me. If I probably lose weight like them, if I gain weight like them, if I am taller like them or skinnier than like them, maybe they will accept me. And I just want to tell you this morning, even when you go to work and you get your salary, you feel when you invite them for a party, for a housewarming, or you get them the biggest gift on their birthday or their baby shower, now you're feeling in your mind, now they will accept me. You come to God and God sees your pain. God sees your, your crushing. God sees all that you have been going through. Now he decides to bless you. Instead of us taking our blessings back to God, we go to the same people who are not approving of us. The same people who have been rejecting us. We feel the reason they are rejecting us is because we, we don't have you know, have you been in that position where you feel the reason you're not fitting in is because maybe you are not working or the reason you're not fitting in maybe because you are single that they are married. No, you're always doubting yourself. You are always doubting yourself. You feel if maybe I stay closer to them in sentin, maybe I'll be accepted in the crew. If maybe I dress like them, now you go and you open an account because you want to dress like them. You feel like you'll be accepted. We have done so many things which we all know they're not even in our character, but because we feel like we need to be accepted. And now we place ourselves with the blessing that the Lord has given us. Now here we are. We now named it Reuben, meaning, hey, come and see. So this blessing now is now attracting things which is not supposed to because we feel, oh, the Lord has done it, come and see. It's not even coming from a good place of acknowledging God. We feel, oh, now, now that I have lost weight, maybe he will love me. Now that I have done this, maybe. And I just want to tell you this morning that God will give you another, but it will determine, you will determine what you will do with that another. Yes, you have been rejected. Yes, things did not work, but your life is not in the place where you need to be trying to convince people to love you. You are too old to be sitting in a relationship trying to make people love you. You don't have time to waste in things that are not working. If in that business where you are, you are on, the only one putting money, putting money, because you want certain people to be part of it and they don't want, you don't have any time to waste. God has given you a blessing. Do not name your blessing to attract the favor of the people. Name your blessing to attract the favor of God. Leah was in this predicament. Now that my sister cannot give birth, I can give birth and I'm going to name this child Reuben, meaning I'm going to be spiteful to my sister to say, see, now your husband is going to love me, which is not the point. When the Lord is blessing us, it is not the point of show off. And guess what? It did not work. Because when people don't want you in their company, don't want you, probably for a season they will rejoice. Probably for that day when they are eating the meal you have paid for, they will rejoice. And then when they are done, they go on with their business. I'm sure even with, um, jo um, what's his name, Jacob, he was probably happy. Oh, I have a son. But remember, his desires were on Rachel. So he was probably happy. Yes, I have a son. And because God is faithful, she conceived. And you would think, Leah, you have learned from your mistakes. But here you are, you conceive, you give it birth to another son, and you name him, you name him Simeon. Simeon. And I was checking, what does this name Simeon mean? Simeon means to hear or to be heard, or it means reputation. So now, instead of fixing yourself about yourself and loving yourself, now you feel things they'll make you love. You feel things they'll make you accepted. You feel things that you put around, a bigger car, a bigger this, will make you accepted. Remember, people are not repelling things. They are repelling you. If people don't like you, it is not what you put on that you make them love you. So the problem here, Leah was supposed to fix herself, not buy things to make herself attractive. I don't know if you are hearing me. You fix who you are. You love who you are. You, this is what I always tell ladies. Um, I hope it's PG-18. I always tell ladies, ladies, if you get to a certain age, you need to love yourself so much that you can walk naked and not feel ashamed in your own space. Like, love yourself 
Look at those things that you feel they are flabbies and they are big. They are yours. They are there. Love them. Fix you. Fix you. Be comfortable with who you are. Be comfortable with yourself. Some of us, the only time, especially married women, the only time we take off your clothes is when we are sleeping. You need to be comfortable with who you are. Do not buy things. It's good to have a tummy tuck belt, but when you take it off, still love who you are. And if you feel like you don't love because your tummy is flabby, fix it if you can. The things that we can fix, let us fix them. Let us not just live in this fiction of life hoping things will go away or maybe it will not come out or maybe it will not, it will not be seen. Leah was in that fiction thinking, oh, if I can just keep giving birth because Rachel is uh, barren, no, oh, things will be good. My husband will love me. Fix you. Love you. Be comfortable with you. Like I always say, if you want to lose weight, let it be your idea. If you want to be fed, let it be your idea. Not because somebody said, not because you're doing it to fit in, not because you're doing it because you feel it will be more accepted. And that's what kept happening with Leah. God gives her a blessing. She names a blessing Reuben, meaning come and see the Lord did it for me. And in a spiteful way, not in the happy way. Now God gives her another Instead of rejoicing, no, what does she do? She goes back and says, oh, no, now uh, my reputation is, is gaining momentum. I've got two boys now. Let us see what Rachel will do. Now my husband is coming back. And again, she conceived, this is 33 now, and gave birth to a son. And she said, because the Lord has heard that I'm not loved. Think about this. You know your answers are connected to your prayers to God and when you get them instead of taking your answer and dedicating it to God you take your answer you dedicate it to the people who don't even love you let me tell you what they will come they will come they will abuse your gift they will abuse your service they will abuse everything about you because you keep forcing yourself to them you keep forcing things to them they will abuse them they will abuse you and that's what Leah did she failed to recognize that yes I am being rejected but this is not my fault remember she was not in a desperate situation to get married it was the father who decided she just obeyed so she was supposed to come back to her senses and say oh no wait a minute I was comfortable in my father's house. I was okay. I did not force myself into this marriage. So why am I degrading myself as if I was desperate and end, 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 end? She wasn't. She was not. She was not. So she did not come out as this, oh, they are doing her a favor kind of thing. Because sometimes people will treat you as if they are doing you a favor. But when people, somebody's giving you bread, receive the bread but make it known that you're not doing me a favor receive the bread and be grateful but do not ever put yourself in the position where somebody will make you feel that i am doing you a favor by housing you or i am doing you a favor by paying your fees they need to realize that just because god in this season is using you to help me it does not mean now i need to degrade myself to receive your gift i need to now take myself down to receive the that which you are giving me yes God is using you for this season and I am grateful but I will not sell myself cheap because I'm receiving bread from you and Leah forget to recognize that hey you used to work for my father you used to work for my father meaning my father is wealthy so why am I now degrading myself for your approval I was in my father's house I was comfortable and you know because God is faithful God gave her another Remember I said what I'm talking about today is God will give you another. God gave her another. And then she continued. She named the child Levi or Levi, depending on how you pronounce it. Now she gives birth. This is the third time now. She gives birth to another son. And the son's name is now Levi. And then she, now she's saying, now that I have three sons, Levi means we are united. I mean, like, you know, the Bible will say that the three cord is not easily broken. And remember, Rachel on the other side, nothing is happening. With all the attempts, with all the love, with all the affection, nothing is happening. And yet, God is giving Leah a third chance, and she still fails the test. Remember Samuel's mom, Hannah. She kept praying. She kept praying. Year by year, the Bible records that she used to go down in Shiloh. But the funny thing is, in her prayers, she kept failing the test. 
because in the prayers she wanted a child for people to know that she can conceive when the Lord was looking for a prophet for the season and the time where the people were in. The Lord was looking for somebody who will take the people out of the bondage, who will lead the people. And yet when we are praying, we are, it's all about me. Lord, if I can just buy a house so they know I am not incapable. If I can just take my kids to that school so they know I am not. It is some blessings that have got nothing to do with the people. It is about what the Lord wants to do. Imagine if Mary decided, now that I am pregnant and the angel told me, now this is mine and I'm going to keep it and when I'm going to name it whatever that I feel it is. We are in the point where our service should be to God. If you know you have prayed for it and God has granted it, it has to go back to God. I, I have seen people, Pastor Obi, praying for jobs. They get the job. Their first salary, they go and drink it. Like they go and they call their friends and they go, they blow it. They forget how they were in prayer chains. They forget how they were disturbing other sisters to say, stand with me, pray with me. Now that the Lord has answered, you take your blessing to the same people who rejected you. You are now calling them because you feel you can afford the bills. You forget not to even just give a seed of covenant to say, Lord, I prayed and you have answered. Now we take our blessings, we go squander it with other people, feeling they will welcome us in their club, they will welcome us in their midst, because the problem is actually not the people. The problem, it is not God. The problem is us. The problem was not Jacob nor Rachel. The problem was Leah. Leah did not know who she was. Leah was lost in her identity because she wanted to identify as the wife of. She forgot that, yes, I'm the wife of, but I am also a person of myself. I need to upskill myself. I need to train myself. I need to make sure that I myself as a brand, excuse me, I stand. But she wanted to be identified with the wife of Jacob. This is where we find ourselves, especially as ladies. We want to be identified as, oh, that's a girlfriend of the, the soccer star. Oh, no, that's a fiancé of uh, the richest guy. And we lose our identity because every time somebody refers to you as the, 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 the who of who, we lose our identity. I would rather be identified as the daughter of God than to be identified as somebody else's this. I'm not refueled that works for this company. I need to have an identity. Yes, I might spend my six hours working and serving there, but I need to have my identity outside those things. Like I always say, when all is all done and everything is taken and stripped away, do you know who you are? Remember, if you take all your clothes, remove all the mask, can you find yourself? Can you find yourself? We take all your designer clothes. We take all the things that you feel they make you. When they are all gone, can you still find yourself? Or are you going to be like Leah thinking, oh, if I can make it longer, if I can do it this way. So I am speaking to women this morning that we need to know who we are. If God gives you another, you need to know who you are. And remember now, Leah's got three sons. And because God is faithful, she gave birth to another son. And I thank God that this time she came back to her senses. When she gave birth to the fourth son, he na she named this fourth son. And you can even think about this. This is a married woman who keeps uh, giving birth. Where is the father to name the children? Because now it's like everything is left to her. She gave birth to the first, she names. The second, she na where is the father? Where is the father in this naming ceremony? Now, I thank God, I'm probably in the space where now she gave birth to the third one. She realized it's not about me giving birth. It is not about me doing what I feel I need to do. It's not about me doing the chores. He doesn't want me. You know, you can do the chores, wash for him, cook for him, do whatever. If his heart is no longer there, there is nothing you can do that will make him change his mind. Or if her heart is no longer with you, there is nothing you will do that will make her change her mind. And those are the things we need to get to the realization that, you know what, I have been in this company. I have served this company for whatever donkey years. Now, no matter what I do, you do it good, they complain. You do it bad, they complain. No matter what service you give, people don't appreciate. You need to realize your time has ended. 
You need to realize that your time there has ended. This is why it is important for us to know the seasons in our lives. Like if God is taking you to a certain path and a certain season, you need to know, Lord, how long? How long? If God is saying, go to Cape Town, you need to ask him, Lord, how long? So that when your, your, your time has come to an end, you will know. Remember the Israelites, when they were in bondage, the Bible records that when their time had expired, that's when the taskmasters increased their labors because their time of them being there, it has expired. Now, this, now there's just an annoyance. When they see them, they are, the, the, the Egyptians are now annoyed. So when people are annoyed, they will, they will mistreat you to a point where you either take yourself out or you die in there. And it happened with the Israelites. They failed to recognize that you were supposed to be here for this so so years. Now, beyond the years, we are still there. It is important for you to know that assignment that God has given you. That, Lord, how long? Are you going to Limpopo to start? Not a problem. Lord, how long? Because if you overstay your visit, it's going to be sour. Are you staying with your friend? Are you staying with your sibling? Whatever the case is, you need to know, Lord, how long? Yes, I'm in this dry path. I'm in this dry land. Lord, I don't mind staying here, but Lord, how long? So that when your expiry date comes, you will quick to know to say, my time here has expired. And remember, when the date expire, it does not matter if the can is empty or full you cannot you cannot use it you cannot use it if you have a tin fish once it's expired whether you've eaten it or it is still full it's, it's a bean story it's now annoying because it, it has expired so we need to know and learn have we not have I not stayed my visit maybe the Lord sent me to Homo Zang's life for two years now three years later now all we are doing is quarreling maybe I have a, I have reached the mission I was sent to do, it's done. The only relationship that is forever is marriage. But I tell you, sometimes there are things that will happen in marriage that you, even your spirit, will know that maybe this is not the one that the Lord designed for me. Maybe I took myself here. Maybe I'm the one who pushed myself here. This is what's not, because there are some situations that will, that will break you. Then you will know that my time here has expired. And she gave birth to the fourth son. In this period, she was now wise as the woman that she should be or should have been to begin with. She, had, she was full of wisdom. When she gave birth to the fourth son, she named the son Judah, meaning may God be praised. I've prayed, I got Reuben, and I, I made it a spectacle. I made it a show for people to see that I can give birth and not my sister. I gave birth to Simeon, and I said, how? Now I'll be respected. I gave birth to Levi, and I said, now I'll be united with my husband. And none of all that happened. But now on the fourth one, when the Lord opened a womb, because God gave her another. When the Lord opened a womb, she named this one Judah. May God give you another. I don't know what you are believing God for in this time and in this season. I don't know what has died in your hands. I don't know what is that thing that as I'm speaking, you realize your time has expired and you need to move on or you need to move out or you need to let go. And my prayer this morning is, can the Lord give you another? May God give you your Judah, your Yada. May God give you your Yada. I pray for you, my sister, my mother, my auntie this morning. Looking for accommodation, looking for employment, looking for papers, whatever that it is. Maybe where you are staying, the, the only reason you are there is just for you, you can get by. But this morning I pray from my heart that may, the, may God give you another Maybe you lost your employment, you lost your contract, your business went down and you are just crashing with somebody just to get by. I pray for you this morning. May God give you your Judah. May Jehovah release the heavens and give you your own Judah. May he give you your own new song. May God give you another. When you thought the last three ones were your best things ever. Maybe, oh, you know, the job I did. And in 2008, you know, I got this 
job. It was one of the best. Oh, remember the contract I got in 2012? I thought everything would be good in my life, but it is all now gone. And now that you are back to your senses and you realize that it, everything around you, it is about God, not about the people, not about everyone else, but about God. May now, now that you have this knowledge and this understanding and this realization, may God give to you your Judah this morning. May Jehovah this morning open up heaven and grant to you your own Judah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to read a scripture this morning. Um, hallelujah. And the Bible recalls, this is in, uh, in Genesis. <clears throat> Genesis 4, 26. The Bible says, And Adam again had relations with his wife, and she gave birth to a son. And name the son Seth. This is Eve now. Eve conceived. Remember Eve had two sons also. The other one killed the other. And the other one was in limbo. Remember, he was not, she was not sure if you are alive or dead. You do know those kind of relationships? Those kind of contracts, those kind of relations. You know, you, 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 you're not sure if this person is here or not here. But they're not dead. They are very much so alive. You are not sure if they are here or they are not here. It was the same story with Eve. After the brother killed the one, the other one was <laughs> just, you're not sure. You can't make a decision because you're not sure if this person is here. You can't decide on the way forward because you don't know if this person still wants to be your partner in this business. You know those kind of people that they will, they will not say, I'm going. And you're not sure if they are gone or they are still around. Now you can't make a decision because they, they, they are there. And the problem is not you, it's them. The problem is not you, it's them. Now you are in this limbo. You, you know what you want to do. You, you are very much focused about your ideas. But now these people that you need to partner with, they don't know whether they are there or not. And it was the same story with Eve. Because now the one, at least the one, she can go and point the grave and say, I buried my son here. But this one, I don't even know. Are you here? Are you going? Are you coming? Are you staying? What is going on? And this morning, I just want to tell you, Genesis 4, 26, the Bible says, And Eve gave birth again. God will give you another. Stop texting them and asking them if it's anything for you. God will give you another. Stop sending five emails in one day asking, Is there any job opportunity? And they're ignoring you. God will give you another. Stop asking them to push your file. Just focus now. Back to God. Remember Leah, when she saw three of the other sons, nothing worked. She refocused, repurposed, reboot, and she focused on God. And God gave her another. And she said, this is now my yada, my praise. Leave them. Don't humiliate yourself asking for help. Don't let people disrespect you because you were just asking for help for a season. Remember, everything in life is seasonal. So it was just for this season that I did not have money for bread. But I'm not going to cheap in myself because I called you and now you feel you bought me bread. You're going to disrespect me. No. God will give me another. Eve got another son. And Eve named the second son Seth or Seth. Meaning God has compensated me. That's what Seth means. God gave me a compensation. Because with this one who is alive, I don't know if he's coming or going. This one who is alive, I don't know if he wants this relationship to move forward or not. This one who is alive, I don't even know if he still wants to be part of this movement or not. So God will compensate you. You wasted your time thinking all oh, things will work. You wasted an opportunity thinking, you know what? Maybe if I stick around long enough, things will change and nothing is happening. May God compensate you. You stayed because you were faithful, not because you were desperate. You stayed because you wanted things to work, not because you had nothing to do. You stayed in that company because you were loyal and they mistreated you. May God compensate you. May God give you another. May Jehovah give you another. Pastors, you stayed with your church members because you were loyal to God. You stayed in that building, you paid the bills even when you didn't even have the means because you were faithful to God. May God compensate you. You had church people, 
You were not sure if they were your members or they were coming when it's warm or they are coming when it's hot because when the conditions are not favorable, they were not there. But because you are a man of God who is faithful, you stood. May God compensate you. May God give you another. May God give you another. Hallelujah. Samuel, 1 Samuel 1.20 Hannah, when she got back to her senses and she knew it's about God, not about her. This time around when she went to Shiloh, she went with a different mindset. This is Samuel 1.20 Samuel, 1 Samuel 1 verse 20 This time around when she was going back to Shiloh, she went with a different mindset. She knew this is bigger than me and just wanting a son. This is about God. Hence, she said, Lord, if you give me, I will give it back to you. So when she was preparing for Shiloh, she went with a different mindset. Is, as God is giving you that another, may you start again with a different mindset. When God is giving you another, may you start again with a different mindset. You've seen what has happened in the past. I am not saying take your past and bring them into the future. I'm saying start with a different mindset. If maybe your problem was that you trust too much, this time around ask for spirit of discernment. If your problem was that you are, you are free with the people, this time around ask for self-control. How? Somehow. That, Lord, my issue is I'm too loving. Lord, my issue is that, you know, we, we all have those soft spots, especially women. We have all soft spots you can ever think of. We forgive easily. We, we, we things, you know, when you open your heart easily. I'm not saying close your heart. I'm not saying don't love again. I am not saying don't serve again. But I'm saying go back with a different mindset. Go back with a different mindset. When God gives you another, go back with a different mindset. Yes, you were married, things did not work out. You probably ended up with a divorce. When God gives you another, go in with a different mindset, not the old one trying to change things. Go with a different mindset that this time around God is going to work because I'm different. Whitney Houston sang a song some time back and says, I'm wiser now. I'm not that foolish girl I used to be. I am wiser now. I know better now. May that be your mindset as you are stepping in, into your another, into your Judah. May you go back with that knowledge that I am wiser now. I know better. I know what to do. I know how to do it. I know what not to do. I know how not to speak. I'm wiser now. When God gives you either your Judah or your Seth, may you go there with wisdom. May you go there with a different mindset. Hannah went to Shiloh with a different mindset. And when her womb opened, Samuel came forth. And she named the child Samuel, saying, God has heard. Three babies. Judah. I don't know which one you're looking for. Seth or Samuel. Are you looking for a compensation because of the time you have lost are you looking for praise because you have been crying? Are you looking for an answer because you have been asking? I have three babies to give you. You can have your Samuel. You can have your Seth. You can have your Judah. But all I know is this morning and today, as we are wrapping up this series of um, Women's Day, that Jehovah will give you another. God will give you another. Hallelujah. And we all remember... Lamech was 182 years old and he had a son and he named him Noah saying may this one comfort us Lamech was 182 years old he gave birth to a son and he named him Noah saying may the Lord comfort us I don't know what you are looking for this morning. There is Noah, there is Samuel, there is Seth, and there is Judah. May the Lord compensate you. May the Lord comfort you. May the Lord give you praise because he is faithful. May the God that we serve give you another. 
may Jehovah give you another and when, when you get your another may you go in with a different mindset when you get your new contract may you remember to put, put God first may, when you get that employment that marriage that child that you are believing God for in your in your marriage may you name that child behind God may you name that child after God that God heard me and he compensated me that God gave me my yada my Judah my praise that is not about me and my husband but it is about the purpose and the will of God over our lives I just want to pray this morning and my prayer is going to be Genesis remember we're reading Genesis 29 and now when you go to verse 22 Genesis 29 22 says then God remembered Rachel he listened to her, opened her womb, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. And she said, God has taken away my shame. God remembered Rachel, opened her womb, and she responded and said, God has taken away my shame. I pray this morning that Jehovah will take away your shame. Whatever that is causing shame, that nobody knows about you know those things that every time when you think about them that they bring shame to you I'm saying may Jehovah give you another and remove your shame may God remember you and remove your shame because I know he is faithful and he will give you another God will give you another God is faithful Jehovah will give you another this morning I pray for you this morning that your heart desires be met. This is the word I have this morning, which I wanted to bring to us, that may God give you another. Yes, you've made mistakes. I always say, if we knew better, we wouldn't have made mistakes that we made. But I thank God also that we made mistakes so that we learn from them. It will be foolishness to do the same thing with your another, expecting a different result. Now that you know what not to do, it's like learning how to bake and cook. When you start, you might do 200 on your oven. But as you get better, you do better. As you get better, you do better. We are in the lockdown, the corona season, whatever you want to call it. May we, as God is giving us another chance, either to go and gather in full capacity, may we not go back with the same mindset. May we not go back serving God with the same mindset we did before lockdown. May when he's, he gives us another chance, may we go back with a different mindset, realizing that God is giving us another. This morning, I just want to pray for every woman, every lady, Believe in God for one thing or the other. This morning, I just want to stand and declare that may the Lord give you another. If you're saying, Lord, I am looking for the fruit of the womb. I remember after Charisma was born, we were like, Lord, we are ready for number two. And number two came as we are getting excited. Hey, we, now we are pregnant. We are excited. I had a miscarriage. Now, as in the process of saying, oh, Lord, oh, I thought, Lord, I thought, and there's a miscarriage. And guess what? It was an, a matter of months, and God gave us another. And I thank God that another we knew, this one, her name is praise, meaning yada, that we, we recognize that God gave us another. When Jesus was about to leave, when he was speaking to them, he said, I need to go, but God will send you another so meaning there's never gonna be a time where you are by yourself there's gonna never gonna be a time where you are helpless there's gonna never gonna be a time where you are desperate we should stop putting ourselves in desperate situations because we are not desperate he said when I'm leaving don't sorrow because if I don't go you will not get another if you don't let go of that relationship you will not get another if you don't walk out from that thing which is not working you will not get another he said it is needful for me to go so you can get another it was needful for those sons not to mean anything to Jacob because God knew that I want to do something different. Imagine if he had embraced them, there would be no Judah. If he had embraced them, there would be no somewhere. So it was needful to go through that situation. So you get another. Don't sorrow. Don't sorrow. That's what Jesus said. Don't sorrow for me. If I don't go, you won't get another. 
If you don't make that move, you won't get another. You will not know how it's like to be on the other side. If you keep staying in that abusive relationship, you will not know what good marriage is all about. If you keep staying in that dead business, you will not know what prosperous business is about. Let God give you another. But he won't give you another if your hands are tied to the other. You need to let go and grasp your another. Say, Lord, I am ready for my another child. I am ready for my next project. Lord, I am closing this door on this thing. I am ready for my another. Don't, don't go back and start resuscitating that dead situation because you feel something will come out of it. Let it die so you can move to another. Let it die so you can move to another. There's something that God has for you in store, but your hands are tied. I know sometimes it is hard. I've been there to forgive certain situations, but you need to ask the Holy Spirit to say, Father, help me because I want to go to my another. But I don't want to go to my another with bitterness. I don't want to go to my another with this mentality of not trusting people. I need to let go so God can give me another. Jesus told his disciples that if, I, if I'm not going to go, there will be no another. So it is your choice. Are you going to hold on? Are you going to let go so you can get you another? But I pray for you this morning that the Holy Spirit will give you the ability to give up and let it be so you can have your another. Some, some, sometimes you realize after you have let go of things that, wow, I would have deprived myself of this if I was busy holding on to what was not. Because of fear. Sometimes it's because of fear. And the Bible says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of boldness and a sound mind. So this morning we need to arise, daughters of Zion. We are bold people. We can do this. We can do this. We are better than this. You are more than that abusive boyfriend. You are more than that. God can give you another. But you need to purpose in your heart that this one is dead and I'm moving on. Jesus said it is needful. It was needful for that relationship to die. It was needful for that business to die because the partners you were with, they were not the partners you're supposed to be. It was needful for that church to close. So when you start, you start with a different mindset because God will give you another. He controls everything. Everything is in his hands, but it is up to you. Do you want to let go so you can have another? If you're holding on to Simeon, you need your own reputation to maintain him. But if you are saying, Lord, I am ready for Judah, God will give you praise. Let me tell you, if you are praising, people will hear that you are praising. You don't need to invite them. If things are happening, we can see. You don't need to tell us. Even your glow alone will tell us that things are happening. But we need to let go of Simeon. Let go, let go. Let God give you Noah and rest. Let God give you Samuel and rest. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your daughters. I thank you for your sons even, oh God. I hope this morning, Lord, they have heard you, Lord, and they are ready to run with you. As you give us another, Jehovah, we thank you, for we will run with your mandate, Lord. As you give us second chances, oh God, in different areas of our lives, may we remember you, Holy Spirit. May we enter with a different mindset. May we enter with a different knowledge that God be the center of it all. I will not start anything that the Lord is not in. I will not continue anything that Jehovah it is not in. Therefore, we thank you, Lord, this morning that you have given us another. And we are ready to run, Lord. Be lifted, be magnified, be glorified. Jehovah, heal every brokenhearted, mend every wound this morning. Father, we look to you, the Holy Spirit. We look to you, the comforter, the paraclet, the paracalio. You are always with us. This morning, we look to you, Lord. Heal us, O oh God, mend our brokenhearted, that we may move forward and expect another. We close all the doors, Lord, so that the new one may open. We thank you this morning. Be lifted, be magnified. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to hand over back to Pastor Obi. He's going to close for us. But thank you so much for beautiful four Sundays. It has been a great time, and I'm happy that you were part of this uh, movement, and I believe and I know that God will give you another. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. There you have it. What a time in the presence of the Lord. What a time in the presence of the Lord. Is there anybody grateful for the word that you've heard today? What a word. We thank you so much, Pastor Fifi. And the Lord will give another. It was a prophetic word. I don't know about you. It was a prophetic word for me. It's a prophetic word for me. God will give you another. You know, when the word of God comes in measures like this, you must learn how to jump into the river of the word. You do not struggle with the river. Most people who drown in flowing rivers are those that struggle with the river. You have to learn how to adapt with the waves, with the streams, and flow with the river. God will give you another. I know strongly that this word resonates with most of us. Not just me. I know this word resonates with most of us. I know most of us, we have been blessed by this word. I know this word has blessed your heart. What a perfect time to honor this woman of God, seeing that today is her birthday. I'm going to honor her today. I don't know about you, but I've told you how to tap into the word. When you tap into a word like this, God opens up the reality of that word to you. May God give you another. I know there are a lot of us right there watching, believing for another, another chance for career, another chance maybe in relationship, another chance maybe it could be your education. You are believing for another. This is a good time to tap into this prophetic word. It's a good time to sow into this word. So I pray for you. May the Lord God give you another. Wow, we've come to towards the end of the service. I'm just looking at the time. I want to thank every single one who has been part of this like I did earlier on. But I want to give you a time and opportunity to sow a seed. You are saying, Pastor, I have an offering. Oh, Pastor, I have a tithe. Uh, we call it our seed of covenant, by the way. Oh, Pastor, I have a seed for Pastor Fifi who just gave a word. I'm going to flash the banking details like we always do. And by the way, I want to say a big, a big thank you to everyone that has responded. You know, each time we say sow a seed to the ministers, you have been responding. We have been seeing it with the references. Kia, siya bonga. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being merci, obrigado. Thank you so much for responding. Thank you for responding. By a danki. Thank you so much. We have seen you respond. Sowing seeds to all those women that have blessed us. And by the way, if this is not resonating with you, meaning you have not sown a seed, please repent. All the way, go back to Pastor Lola, go back to Queen Esther, go back to Dr. Z. Please, let's sow a seed. And also for today, Pastor Fifi has blessed us. Sow a seed into this word. Sow a seed. I'm not, trying to, I'm not going to convince you that I'm going to eat your mind. I'm not, I don't have energy for that. That's not the kind of minister I am. If you have known me for years, you know what I stand for. But I need you to sow seeds to all these people if you haven't. Today, Pastor Fifi has blessed us. Sow a seed to this word. As you believe God to give you another. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm, I'm just going to give you an opportunity to give. So I'm just going to flash right now the banking details for the church. And I'll be back in the next 30 seconds to close the service. I'll see you just now.
But there you have it. There you have it. There you have it. So be a blessing in the season. Be a blessing in the season. Let God use you in the season to do what he needs to do. Thank you so much for being a part of the service. Listen, we do not take you for granted. We don't. We appreciate the time. And we know sometimes it's a sacrifice for most people, especially for those that don't have massive amount of data on capped data. But you still, you still enjoy it and we're part of the service. May the Lord God honor you. May the Lord God give you another in this season in the mighty name of Jesus. So we are about to go. Thank you so much, all the women. Next month is going to be a, a great time. We're going to have a, a, a lot of time in prayer this coming month. So get ready for what God is going to do in this month. One thing I know, you will never, you will never end this year the way you started. You will finish better. You will finish stronger. You will finish wiser. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Kosi Amakosi. Glory to God. So what? we just want to thank you so much. Can I pray with you? As I release you on this last Sunday, if you can, just stretch your hands towards me as we pray. Father God, I thank you for everyone connected right now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. May he give you shalom. May he give you peace. May he surround you with favor like a shield. May his presence go before you behind you and surround you wherever your names are mentioned whether for good or for evil let God rise up like a mighty warrior let him speak for you let him fight for you a thousand may fall on your side then thousand on the other side it will never come near you you are blessed in the fields you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the country the work of your hands shall be known as blessed so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout a loud amen and amen. Amen, and amen. So I want us to end today's meeting. I want us to end today's meeting with a dance, with a celebration. I think it's a song I have come to fall in love with. So please don't just tune out. Please don't tune out. As the song plays, dance to it. Enjoy the song. It's called Makanaka. I fell in love with that song. I need to learn that language, beautiful language. So the Lord is going to lead us into the next season. Allow the Lord help us. Let him bless you. So please and please put your ears on the ground. Know what is happening in this season for the church, for the ministry, and the Lord God will honor every one of you. So like I said, don't tune out. This three minutes of data you're going to use is not going to kill you. Please. Let's enjoy the music. Dance to it. We love you so much, Pastor Fifi and I. One more time, happy birthday, Pastor Fifi. Thank you so much for being a blessing. Thank you for the word. We love you too much, maybe three much, four much. Bye for now, everybody. God bless you. Somewhere you found me. Your kingdom wouldn't leave me the same. I still remember everything you've done since then Cause you are the king, your reign is forever You give us your peace, it feels like we're home It's not from the world, but here in our hearts We're never getting over this